Is it true that you two also have brunch together sometimes? You you hang out like you're you're friends no matter what. So this was two friends working together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How often do you get to hang out? How often do you get to like see your? Well, neighbor? like. Quite a bit. I mean, yeah. we, we do. We, we do. both work we a lot yeah. and we're traveling a lot, but yeah. it's random, but a, a, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, got, I got to get her away from, you know, that, that uh, singer boy. <laughs> I got to have her to myself for a while in the cab. <laughs> 44th between 9th and 10th. You handle it all. That is kind of a daddy o moment right there, right? That is kind of like it feels like it feels right. like the movie, right? Yeah. You're like, what is this relationship? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> How would you describe your relationship? In real life? Yeah. Like, well, friends and uh, allies. Yeah, those, those are good ways to put it. I, I've sort of stumbled on a way of articulating. Oh, She's yeah. very special. Um, Making the movie, going to work, was like if if you'd never heard the song yesterday before, and Paul McCartney was in the back seat at work and he, he would play it for you. Yesterday, love was such an easy game to play. But it's a woman, and it's her. And you get to hear that and see those eyes in the seat. That was what it was like. That's what she's like. She's like this beautiful song. It's really nice to be around her. <laughs> he has worked with a lot of great leading ladies. What does it feel like to hear that kind of compliment for somebody who is legendary? That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Thanks. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Want some radio? Not really. Oh, What's his name? It doesn't matter. Oh, I see. He's married. Don't you know, drive a cab 20 years and not know people. Why do you care? Who else are you gonna talk to about this? Not like you're ever gonna see me again. Tell me how about how this came about, this project, Dakota, because it was your, you going to Sean, correct? Well, yes, but we, uh, when Ro and I, my producing partner, were developing the project, and um, we were like, well, it would be really great to have like a Sean Penn type, because he's, he would be perfect. And then we were like, what about Sean Penn? <laughs> <laughs> and then, I sent it over to you, and you read it, and we went for a walk and talked about it, and um, and then luckily he was like, all right. How was that first conversation with him when you went for that walk? It was really great. Yeah. He really loved the script, which I was relieved about. You know, it's embarrassing when you send, which happens to me all the time, but when you send something that you think is good to someone that you admire, and they're like, not for me. <laughs> But luckily, this was this was for him. So it's it was inspiring, and we really connected on it. And it's also you know it it's a film that talks about some difficult issues between men and women of all different dynamics. And I think Sean, you know, a lot of our conversation was like how how do we approach that honestly but safely? And I, I think one of the things was that you felt very safe in that role because it was made completely by women. Yeah, that was a big part of uh, the, that part of the comfort. The, I mean, it, when, she, when I read the script and then having it, having come from her and knowing it was going to be her in that part, it was a gift. I just I thought, wow, this is, the, the, being in your 60s is pretty good. You know, you sit there and <laughs> this kind of project comes and beautifully written. And then, yeah, we, I, I did think to myself, there's a lot of this stuff that, um, is in conversation all the time um, in the in the privacy of one's homes, uh, but there's so little diversity of personality left permissible by the culture at large. It's kind of uh, suffocatingly uh, flat, mm -hmm. and this wasn't. And that it was written by, produced by, directed by women. Well. Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say, because you do broach some very delicate topics in this, but 
we don't get those discussions anymore. So it felt actually good because I just have to tell you, I heard there's this movie, they're gonna sit in a car the whole time and talk and I'm like, come on mm. y'all. And then you see it. How'd you meet your wife? She threw up in my cab. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss her? Do sometimes. Then you hear what you're talking about and you're like, oh damn, good, we can have these conversations. How did you get there? I mean, that's a Christy question. I think the way that she wrote this this script and it has such a flow to it and all of the pauses are very intentional and all of the moments where you feel like you have a little break from from an, the intensity of the conversation are very intentional so that you feel like you are also on this journey with these people and I think you know I I love all different genres of film but I am I I do miss films and stories about human connection and and the messiness of being a human being and having relationships with other human beings. And I like to, I'm inspired by that on screen, on the page, in art, I'm, that, that's what really makes my heart beat. So I, I guess with this specific project, it just felt like, a, it, felt, it did feel like a gift, you know? Mm -hmm. And because it was so contained and it was such a small production and, you know, it just feels like a little pocket of humanity. How much were you in the car and how much was the car actually on the road or were you in the studio? Well, we shot the whole movie in 16 days. We had two days that we shot outside of the car on location. Uh, and then before we started shooting the movie, we had a day where we shot uh, with an array car with nine cameras in all directions on the drive from JFK into New York City. So that's what you're seeing projected out the windows of the taxi cab. And then everything in inside the taxi cab was shot on a stage with three huge LED panels that we moved in a 360 motion uh, that was projecting the drive. So for Sean, like when he was in front, when he's driving, he would see the road in front of him. It was kind of like... It, was, it felt like you were driving without control. <laughs> yeah, it was it like a weirdly good. immersive yeah. experience. In the movie, Clark says that he, um, if you drive a cab for 20 years, you get to know people. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about people during your career? Don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> no, you nice like one. people. <laughs> you like people in certain places. In certain what have I learned about people? People now, you know, in this culture, it's one thing, people then and another. I'm, a, we are all still learning about people and people are covering up who they are more and more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> That's what makes this movie kind of a revelation that mm -hmm. people, while they're covering up, you guys are so open and honest with the conversations and said things about situations that you're like, what? I wish I could have said that to somebody. Um, and they said they wanted a Sean Penn type. What is the, to you, what, who is a Sean Penn? Who is a Sean Penn type? Well, it was more, it was more like, we can't get Sean Penn. And then we were like, maybe we can. You know, it was, it was a Sean Penn type as, as like a pipe dream, but I always saw him in, in that role. But on the other side, I, I, I opened the envelope predisposed to want to like whatever it was going to be because of this one. Mm -hmm. And it just was, I was pages in by the time uh, I was saying thank you. I drive around all day. You had time to do nothing but think, you know. Look, at the end of the day, people are people. And people get lonely. How was it, now, you're, you're in the same position talking the whole time, and sometimes you get to turn and talk to her when you guys are stopped, but for the most part, it's like you're talking over your shoulder. How was that? Because what movie have you ever done where you've been in the same kind of place the entire time you're talking? Well, ne never. Yeah. I mean, in, unless I was in a movie for just a minute, it, like in one room and only one scene, you know, but I, I, I think it was really profound for us when we were making the film and, and you know, we shot chronologically, so it was the first few days was just sort of looking at each other in the rearview mirror and I was able to look at sort of the side of his face and the back of his head, but he only saw me in the rearview. 
And then there's the moment where he turns and it's like a whole new relationship between people. It's a whole new meeting of strangers. And it's almost, you know, it's like a weird jarring intimacy that happens uh, when they're finally face to face. And then she leans up at some point. So it's these like really micro movements that are playing with tension between people in this really tense space. Um, but I found it so liberating because when you are in the back of a car, you do feel like you're like, okay, I'm in, I'm in this space and I'm alone, but you're not alone. And especially when you're alone with a stranger, there's a sort of bravery or vulnerability that I think you might feel to say things or be somebody that maybe you wouldn't say or be in any other environment because you m probably will never see that person again. Mm -hmm. Driving from JFK into Midtown sometimes can be a two hour. I mean, I, I was like, I get it. You can just, just the normal drive in traffic is a long time. But what are some of the ways and some of the things that you guys did to elongate that time? For people who haven't seen it, I saw it, but for people who haven't seen it, how do you elongate that time coming in from, because people say the airport, that's a 20 minute drive, but it's not. Mm -hmm. Well, things happen in the story that the audience will see after they pay for their ticket. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.